Hi guys, welcome to this powerful video with Apostle Michael Robo. This particular video was carefully selected and edited to improve your knowledge on spiritual things and draw you closer to God. Don't forget to like this video, share with loved ones and family, and subscribe. Stay tuned. Before I bring up the servant of God tonight, let me attempt to articulate some of the things the Holy Ghost has been communicating since the beginning of this meeting, just to create a pathway for him to bring the witness of God. Glory to Jesus. The theme of this conference by the Spirit of God has been titled Born of God. Born of God. Glory to Jesus. The Bible said that which is spirit is spirit and that which is of the flesh is flesh. There is a clear distinction between that which is divine, sacred, and holy from that which is mundane and of flesh. And if we trust to advance God's kingdom on this side of the divide, then a people who are not just taught church language, a people who don't just know how things are done in church, but born of the spirit must emerge. For us to be able to bring the witness of heaven which sustains the power and the capacity to move back the tides of darkness and establish the dominion of God, then there must be a necessity for a generation born of the Spirit to emerge. It is on this note that the Lord has given the marching orders for us to be here to bring the counsel of God. Glory to Jesus. We are trusting God that that generation that is able to pipe down the counsel of God and establish his dominion on the face of the earth will be born. Because if that does not happen, our number will count for nothing. If that does not happen, all our activities, no matter how spiritual they appear, will be rituals that hold no power to command authority in the realms of the spirit. And so Jesus began to admonish from his days the necessity for men born of the spirit who have the capacity for kingdom business to emerge. Because in John chapter 3 from verse 1, we saw that one of the rulers, a respected man of God, as it were, came to him at night and entered the deliberation. And from their conversations and communications, they attested to the fact that of all the teachers that they had within the landscape, this was the first time they saw a man that came from God. This was the testimony of the scribes and the Pharisees. Of themselves, they knew that what they were doing was earthly. Because when they explained the ministry of Jesus, they saw that there was something in his ministry that was not captured in their own ministry. And so they attested to the fact that they know that he was not just a teacher that had the capacity to explain the Torah. They knew that he was a teacher come from God. Because they said no man could do the things he was doing except God was with him. And so the very utterance from that man revealed that they attested to the fact that God was not with them. So it is, it is possible that God is not with the people, yet they have built a system. And they are carrying out religious rituals that have no power in the heavens. But all of a sudden, a man who did not have systemic power as it were, was walking through the landscape and all of the, the doctors of the law concluded that this one is of God. Because we see the testimonies of heaven manifested through him. And they wanted to know what they would do to come into that order of spiritual manifestation. And Jesus told them there is a clear divide. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. No matter how you decorate it, it's flesh. He said, but that which is of the spirit is spirit. And he told them, except a man be born again, he cannot perceive the kingdom. He cannot participate in the kingdom. Meanwhile, when you study the scriptures, there are three things that gives value to man's existence. The first is the knowledge of God that he has. If you walk through this side of the divide and you have not encountered God, your time here was a waste. Because Jesus said in John 17 verse 3, he said, this is life eternal that you may know him, the only true God, and him whom he has sent. And so man's life constitutes on the depth of intimacy that he has with God. 
So John was speaking in first John chapter 1 from verse 1. He said that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. That is what we commit to you. So the apostles understood that this whole thing would have been a dead operation except as we encounter God. And so our knowledge of God, experiential knowledge of God, is what gives value and justification to our existence. The second thing that gives value to our existence is our worship of God. Because when the 20 and 4 elders were worshipping in the heights of the heaven, there was a statement they made. They said all things were created for a purpose. Revelations 4, 11. All things were created to give you pleasure. So anything that is created that does not give pleasure to God is a wasted creation. All things were created for thy pleasure. And so when Jesus was speaking in John 4, 24, he said there are a people the Father is seeking. Those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So it is worship that gives pleasure to the Father. So the first thing that gives justification to our existence is the knowledge of God that we have. Because that knowledge is not information. It's not facts accumulated. That knowledge is actually intimate encounters that transfigures you to the likeness of God. For we all with open faces, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed. Because what God wants to achieve is to raise a people that mirror him. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness let them have dominion so god was not creating another entity that could do something else apart from him god wanted to have himself manifest in a realm and the only infrastructure that could manifest god was a creation that was after his kind but that is not possible except as we begin to encounter him we all with open faces beholding us in the glass the glory of the lord we are changed so the knowledge of god is the heaviest molecule of our existence and the second thing that makes our existence count is the depth of worship and i told you worship is not a song you can worship through singing but worship is actually a product of adoration that flows from your spirit because of your intimacy with god so a man who does not know god can't worship him on is the level to which you know god that you can worship him there is a level of adoration that comes out of your spirit even when you are not talking because of what you have seen this is why the 24 elders they didn't have too much lyrics in their singing holy 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 is the lord that was enough because they saw that this creature was in his own class there was no being as majestic as him so all they could say is you are in your class you are separated into your name there is none like you that was enough for them adoration flowing out of their spirit because of their encounter with god and i said that adoration becomes worship when you submit to his government that's why when they sang holy they fell on their faces so worship begins with adoration born from intimacy but resulting in obedience to the commandments of god and so that is what god is looking for a people that could work that can worship him and then when he finds these people then the third thing that god wants is for these people to carry his kingdom he said let them have dominion because the government is looking for sons of light the media is waiting for sons of light for the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation not of christians not of bible school graduates the earnest expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god so we need men that have power and ranking in the spirit to bring the government of god we are many but kingdom has not been found you enter into places as small as a family unit you can't find god you can't trace god you can't see the will of god you can't see the nature of god you can't see the power of god because men that can download government from the third heavens have not yet emerged until we 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 become envoys of heaven that when we step into a place you can find god's character when we step into a place you can find god's power when we step into a place you can find god's philosophy and ideology a generation has not risen because that is the body in the heart of the father this is why when he created the world he only created a portion called a, the garden of eden because the duty of man was to to multiply so that the whole earth is saturated because eden is not a place it's a it's a portal it's a gateway between heaven and earth so that god and man can collide but from that point of intercourse man is expected to carry that atmosphere into every sphere of his engagement and so if there is a government that does not have the fear of god it means sons have not emerged if there is a media 
that does not have this the fear of god songs have not emerged listen we are not in the institutions of the world to survive our survivor does not come from the system of this world my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus the reason we are in the institution is because we want to bring government there we are ambassadors high commissioners of heaven there is a power that we must carry because the world is dying waiting for sons there is a power if you study romans 8 verse 2 the word is called elutero it's a power that sons carry to establish dominion if we can establish that dominion then our existence was a waste but we can't do this except as we are born of god for that which is flesh is flesh but that which is spirit is spirit it becomes spirit when you encounter god it becomes spirit when he resorts to worship and it becomes spirit when the kingdom of god begins to find expression in our spheres of influence this is why we are considering the subject of being born of god and i told you scripturally speaking there are four things that this subject represents number one is spiritual rebirth to be born of god means you are born of the water and of the spirit is a spiritual rebirth is the rise of the new creation men who are formed and created in christ jesus ephesians 2 10 said we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto every good work so it's a rebirth of the spirit and the bible showed us how this rebirth takes place he said is to believe that jesus is the son of god first john 5 verse 1 and i said the implication is because god created a system a mystery that transfers spirit into human into human realm because jesus is the first spirit that was able to clothe himself with flesh and until you believe in that possibility you cannot be inducted into that reality because the way spiritual things happen is that you believe to become and so you must first of all believe that jesus was spirit yet he became flesh this is why christianity is the only religion that god recognizes because we are the ones who believe that god can dwell among men every other religion is trying to reach god we believe that god has reached us so we are not obeying rules in order to please god we have become part of the family of god because a technology has been introduced to us this may sound a bit um, insensitive but this is the truth this is the truth except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom he can't be part of god's family except and to be born of god is to believe that jesus is the son of god and i told you some of these people have been darkened they say how can god give birth to a child when he doesn't have a wife and i'm wondering even in the lowest level of animals amoebas give birth without marriage so who told you that there must be a union between a man and a wife for a child to be born god is the author of all mysteries all power dwells with him and when we study the bible we discovered that when god speaks his word is not sound his word is a person so when god sits on his throne and he talks god is there and god still goes to work because there are errands that only god can run like creation you can't commit creation to angels so when god wants to run an errand that only god runs god has to send his word to commit to do that errand and the way god does it is that god sits on his throne and god talks and the word of god walks like a man and goes to carry out that errand the word the one sitting is called father the one who went to do the work is called son so father and son is not a biological process it's a separation of god in order for god's agenda to be carried out now this word that went out the bible said became flesh and dwelt among us so when we see jesus we know the mystery that took place that god spoke the word the word came out as a person and that spirit person took on flesh and become a man so he said without controversy great is the mystery of godliness that god was manifested in the flesh anybody who believes this mystery then something happens to him he becomes a part of the family of god because if you don't believe it you can't be part of it and so i said the first thing about being part of god is to believe the reality now that you believe the reality 
the second thing is that God sends his spirit into your heart so when we talk about being born of God we are talking about believing in the technology of incarnation that spirit can put on flesh and when a spirit puts on flesh that being becomes a spirit man and because you believe it the Holy Ghost can now come into you so that you too can become a spirit man God dwelling on your inside and so Romans 8 15 said the Spirit of God cries in us Abba father for we have been adopted to become the sons of God and I said now that we have been adopted to become the sons of God it doesn't stop there God now creates a system to destroy the flesh because when we fell we were mastered by the flesh the forces of this realm became a lord over the flesh and so God did not allow the spirit man to be a slave of the promptings of the flesh so first John 3 9 says him that is born of God does not commit sin because his seed abides in him forever so the protocol is believe that spirit can put on flesh because you believe it the, whole, the father sends the spirit into you and your spirit becomes one with the spirit of God so you too become a spirit being put in on flesh now that you have put on flesh the father now empowers you with grace to subdue the promptings of the flesh when this is now achieved then he commissions you to take over the world and that's why first John 5 4 said whoever is born of God overcometh the world this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith and I said when this happens to you there is an awakening you are awakening into the eternal man the man that lives forever the man that function in the god class the man that god is able to entrust his government to that man is the man god is looking for when the bible said the father now speaking in john 3 verse 17 this is my beloved son in whom I'm well placed. He is telling us the portrait of the man he's looking for. He's looking for the man born of God. The man that a spirit putting on flesh, yet flesh not having power over him. That's the man God is looking for. When he finds that man, he gives him authority to dominate the world. And I said when the way that authority comes is by awakening of seven dimensions. And I said this first dimension of awakening that happens to you is that you are awake awoken to the forces and the power of eternal life that means you begin to live by another kind of life you begin to live by another reality you are no longer powered by blood you are powered by the life of the ages to come you are powered by the same life that powers god and that's not all after that awakening happens the second awakening is awakening into immortality. You come to a point where you live above death and corruption. Because the man of God does not die. And I told you when I say man of God, I'm not talking about a preacher. I'm talking about one born of God. He said there's a man sent from God whose name was John. That's a man of God. A man that lives above death and corruption. This is what the gospel comes to reveal. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 10, he said he revealed life and immortality through the gospel. And so as we keep evolving in God, we keep transfiguring into our glory dimensions. Where death has no power over us. Where corruption has no power over us. And the third awakening is awakening of the womb of the spirit. That's where nations are born from. Oh, that's where we talk about priesthood. Because you will discover that anything that is not born from the womb of the spirit is a mirage. Because when Satan comes, he will destroy it. The reason we bet things and they live forever is because those things were incubated on the altar. They came from the womb of the spirit. The prophetic word of God is what bets them. And when it is born that way, even if the gate of hell rises against it, it can bring it down. The awakening of the womb of the spirit that's what we call the mind of christ where you things come out of you because they came out of god through you your altar becomes a connection between earth and heaven and then number four i spoke about the awakening of the faith of the son of god you no longer take action based on what you see 
you take action based on what the word says and what the spirit prompts you and many times it may not look like it but if god says it it is born even if it never existed for even the word was created by the word of god and then the next awakening is the awakening of the spirit of righteousness where you live and reign in life by the power of the endless life and then i said the next awakening is the awakening of the authority of the son of god and then finally the awakening of witnesses and i told you we are the last witnesses there are many witnesses but man the man of god is actually god's last witness for this creation if you study first john 5 7 to 8 the bible said there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the spirit and he said there are three that bear witness on earth he said the word the spirit and the blood but jesus told us in acts chapter 1 verse 8 not many days from now you shall receive the holy ghost and power and you too shall become a witness so we are witnesses on earth and so the man who is born of god when he shows up you will know that you don't know him after the flesh that man may come feeble he may come and not look like it but when his witness begins to speak you will know that this one is a gangway to the spirit realm because he can come with the witness of the prophetic and he shows you things that were not studied he can come with the witness of the wisdom of god and by that wisdom witty inventions can come out of him he can come with the witness of the power of god and you'll be there seeing things change by his commands even demons obey him these are the people that god wants to raise men that are born of god who can bring heaven to earth so that the kingdoms of this world becomes the kingdom of our god and of his christ but you see for this to happen we must be discipled we must be taught the ways of god because you can see the acts of god and not know the ways of god the children of israel saw the act of god but only one knew the ways of god and so for the ways of god to be known a generation must be discipled and when we came here this morning through the servant of god pastor isaac Oedipo, god taught us how disciples are made tonight god will show us how disciples are marked are you ready for the word of the lord tonight thank you for watching this very video we brought away we believed you were mightily blessed contained in this message are steps and principles you could apply to your life and get the desired result that is required to take you into the next level of your spiritual journey and walk with god once again thank you for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and most importantly share this video with friends family and the loved ones we would love to hear from you share your thoughts down below in the comment section and we'll see you in our next video